I can go. So I will welcome all the people from industry that are interested to chat on the wideband gap devices. We are working on SIC for the first uh, questionnaire and later on we will have one running for gallium nitride. Yeah, SIC is uh, now an established uh, material in industry. We find it in all kinds of applications that are uh, critical in temperature, critical in efficiency, and uh, so especially the efficiency is a, is a very, very important uh, thing when we look to our energy consumption then the losses in any solutions, if it's in motor drive or a power supply, should be minimized. So we can start with the first question. So the question is, what benefits can the SIC MOSFET over SIE power devices like the IGBTs and the regular MOSFETs bring in the customer or low power drives applications. Okay. Can I start? Please, Konstantinos. First, uh, let me introduce a bit myself. My name is uh, Konstantinos Padmanidis. I come from Greece and I'm an application engineer at Infineon since 2021 in the technical marketing team. And uh, we are about to launch a new product and this is a silicon carbide product. And uh, our goal is that we are targeting with this product like uh, consumer drives applications and uh, not only. We also focusing on uh, residential heat pumps and especially in applications of low power in the range of uh, 300 watt and specifically without heating, namely heatingless applications. As you know, in general, in order to introduce you to this topic, we know that uh, there is a worldwide demand for energy efficient products and uh, energy regulations are increasingly entering. For example, with the energy labeling scale or for, uh, for example, for circulation pumps, we have the energy efficient index and all of these regulations targeting to increase the efficiency of our uh, daily products, circulation pumps, fridge, uh, dishwashers, and so on. And now we can focus in the different technologies. In general, this market is, a, let's say, cost-sensitive market. However, we know that uh, white bank up devices are more expensive at, at the time being, at least. But they can bring benefits such as the temperature independent losses that they provide in the application and also the lower output capacitance which can enable faster switching and this and this can be utilized in motor drives another fact for example in our case in our product that we launch is that uh, it's a co provides combination of facts let's say because it's a QFN package, which includes a silicon carbide half bridge of 260 million uh, dies, 
This, uh, uh, this device also can enable uh, the power density that uh, is required by certain application in this uh, arena, let's say. And uh, of course, in our case, uh, our uh, slew rate is tuned to, to, to around uh, seven volts per nanosecond. And with this, uh, we target this kind of motor drives. And as we compare this uh, with existing technologies, our silicon carbide device, of course, provides uh, lower conduction losses compared with existing uh, reverse conducting, conducting IGBTs as utilized or superjunction MOSFETs. And another example is even a superjunction MOSFET of lower ohmic at room temperature, since the superjunction MOSFET temperature dependency is higher than that of the silicon carbide. At higher temperature, the conduction losses of the superjunction MOSFET will be higher. And this uh, gives an indication of what, for example, a silicon carbide device can bring in terms of conduction losses, for example. This is one, one example. Then different applications have, uh, let's say, light load or high load uh, operating points. Of course, based on the output characteristic, it's obvious that uh, the conduction losses of a MOSFET-based device compared with a IGBD, for example, which is also used, it's uh, way different. And this also brings another benefit in the light load. So this is another indication. As far as the switching losses, as I said, this depends on the DVDT slopes, the IDT slopes, and also on the reverse recovery. And uh, as we know, silicon carbides has a lower reverse recovery uh, current, which can bring certain benefits in terms of switching losses and EMI in these uh, specific applications. Apart from these facts, in general, and uh, focusing on this specific uh, uh, white banker product, in general, on a system level, we know that uh, high integrated uh, motors close in, in the very close vicinity with the inverter by using uh, really short cables can enable uh, faster switching, which brings more benefits for the silicon carbide devices compared with the counterparts of silicon and uh, silicon IGBTs and silicon MOSFETs. And this could allow the device itself to switch faster at higher uh, voltage slopes. And this, in general, could improve the total efficiency, efficiency the total system efficiency, rather, rather than focus only on the inverter stage. Because if we isolate the inverter stage itself, the efficiency Improver improvement, it's not so big. So the efficiency improvement should be on system level. So by pushing, by pushing, for example, the switching frequency slightly higher, this could improve also the system level and efficiency by reducing also the motor losses. And this is something that uh, uh, customers uh, are evaluating in terms of the white bank camp proposal in this uh, application arena in order to totally evaluate the, the benefits. Okay, Konstantinos. I have one point that the higher switching speed is limited by the magnetic uh, behavior of the motor. If uh, you cannot uh, utilize the really high switching capability of uh, SIC up to the point 
where the magnetics of the motor uh, makes the limitation. Uh, that's what I have heard and also learned even in the past with uh, IGBTs who had been able to switch faster and uh, 20 kilohertz for a motor is uh, roughly what I remember where we did not get higher because then you cause losses and other trouble on on the on the end motor side. Mm -hmm. uh, in general, uh, one of the problems comes from the reflections on the cables. If you have longer cables, That's this right. can uh, this can bring uh, higher. Uh, over voltages across the motor and uh, higher slopes, which can stress also the the, be the bearings due to C Excellent. times DVDD. Some solutions are what I know from the market have uh, integrated inverter and motor systems where the uh, cable length is nearly zero. That's uh, this is some an people are working and mm -hmm. doing this. I can give an example for uh, in uh, circulation pumps that are used, for example, in uh, in houses, in general, in consumer in consumers. The inverter itself is located. In the very, as I said, in the very vicinity of the motor, and this is a, a feedback that we got from our customers that this could enable faster switching, for example, that they could yeah. utilize faster switching. Absolutely, Constantinos. I have seen these uh, pumps at Grundfos thirty years ago was standard IGBTs at that time. That's, uh, that's something that now, uh, as I see, can even put a little bit more the efficiency to the border. Exactly. I mean, everything comes with trade-offs. This, this would be clear. And uh, I totally agree. So another important uh, fact, let's say, apart from the higher switching speed and so on, also from our customers, we, they want to extend, let's say, the hitchingless heat boundaries for their applications. And this is uh, one important fact that uh, this product could bring to investigate these hitchingless boundaries conditions. And uh, we demonstrate with our product, with our integrated silicon carbide product, that these uh, hinge sequence boundaries can be extended. And this can, what, bring, what benefits can break for the customer is the assembly simplification because they could uh, get rid of their heating in the range of, uh, we are talking about in the range of 300 watt uh, drive applications. And this, uh, it's important for, uh, for them. Okay, Konstantinos, we can get some more questions coming in. Okay, that's a question to uh, announcement that had been made where I'm a little bit, uh, maybe not exactly your field, but how do you expect SIC market size for the automotive application in terms of a recent Tesla's announcement that 
75% less SIC will be used for powertrain, which is a probably inverter application. Do you have an opinion here? Opinion in terms of uh, in general drives. Yeah. Saving three quarters of the switching elements. That's uh, in in general. Uh, as uh, we highlighted, this is a, a trade-off between. In uh, we know that uh, silicon carbide in drives, it sounds sometimes a bit, uh, let's say, weird. Why not? Because someone says uh, we limit our uh, switching spin, and so on, and uh, the cost is high, and you and you need the low RDS on. Uh, devices to achieve uh, to achieve uh, sufficient performance let's say but this is, is something that uh, also is a combination of facts maybe it's also because of supply issues also tesla based on uh, their experience might be thinking of uh, that uh, silicon igbts can provide sufficient performance and uh, they might uh, use uh, more silicon or yeah this is my my feeling but yeah. then it's a matter of power density with silicon carbide someone could uh, design a system of uh, high power density but then it's a trade off so i don't have uh, let's say in depth yeah opinion constantinos thank you uh, the whole Tesla thing, what Elon Musk uh, announced, is to me a lot of speculation and uh, getting the world a little bit uh, screwed up and then come down back to Earth. Uh, electromobility is uh, like uh, in the gold mining times at the moment and uh, I believe that there is a lot of optimization possible uh, on the inverter on the kind of uh, uh, the whole design that can but reducing and when I look to SIC uh, it's the switching device and it's uh, the diode so three quarters of the given elements taken out means is there a replacement by gun is there a replacement by silicon but to take three quarters away uh, is a little bit uh, scary uh, and makes no sense to me We need uh, to see the practical samples shown coming out of the factory that people can see what's the reality behind these uh, marketing uh, statements. Okay, we can go to the next question. So that's a very simple question. 
uh, why SIC and not still SI? Why silicon moss and not bipolar? Uh, we have always step by step an evolution in semiconductors and if there are the benefits you had explained them before and i just repeat what you said lower losses higher temperature that uh, makes it already and you may uh, say again and add more things less space is uh, also something if you go to SIC instead of SI. Uh, yes, this can be, as we said, this can be translated as a power density by, by in general, uh, reducing uh, the losses. This can be within a smaller size, then we improve the power density of the system. And uh, this specifically in the consumer market where certain application can be still uh, designed without heating, this could be, let's say, beneficial uh, for the customer if this can be realized by silicon carbide devices, which is uh, under evaluation. Mm. Yeah, all what I learned during my years in application, anything is in uh, semiconductors about thermals. You have to watch to get the minimized losses and that's always some kind of thermal equations built out of uh, the design of the MOSFET, the heat sink, and uh, all what's uh, maybe surrounding like uh, uh, water cooling, air cooling, no heat sink. That's, that's always uh, a question, how can you do optimize the best? Okay, we are ready for the next question. Can this technology, SIC MOSFETs, provide improvements on system level? We both can say yes. That's De the <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is uh, definitely, and uh, as we as we highlighted previously, also as I highlighted previously, yes, this is definitely achievable, and this is something that uh, consumer drive manufacturers need to look at it because as we highlighted, as we said, there is a worldwide demand for energy efficient products. And uh, this is driven by the directives. So every watt, let's say matters. At least uh, this is, this is uh, true and especially in our uh, upcoming years. So yeah, especially in the view that we will have a zero emission world in the future. That means that the sunshine, the wind and the water power will do all what we need and electricity uh, and we will go away from generating uh, CO2 uh, emission. 
And uh, specifically in this, because now we talk about consumer market, this change of the en energy labeling makes it more difficult for the manufacturers to achieve the high, the highest levels of this scale. So one way, for example, for drives as we highlighted is to use silicon carbide and by this reducing, improving the energy efficiency of the inverter, but also they could explore slightly higher switching frequencies, which uh, this could improve the total system, the system level efficiency. And or slightly higher uh, switching speeds, this could uh, enable this. Okay, Konstantinos. I think everybody understands that. Now the next question is coming up. I can imagine that sinusoidal filter is not so common, despite the fact that it could help to use higher switching frequency in the motor drive, which is your opinion. Uh, I, I don't think the filter is the solution. The switching speed, which is uh, given by the device. If I put a filter in between, I generate uh, a little bit of losses generated by the filter. If I switch the device optimized, I do not need a filter. It's an old man's uh, word at that point. But but maybe maybe for for specific cases, for example, if you want to protect your bearings due to high DVD, for example, and make it uh, the voltage, let's say, smoother. This in certain application, this could could utilize, but specifically for consumer drives because it's a cost-driven market. Yeah, this is extremely continuous. extremely tough and uh, not. Yeah, I, I fully wouldn't agree, say no. But what I remember from the traditional uh, gate drive possibilities, you can tailor the gate uh, resistance and have uh, the possibility to adjust the slew rates in up and down, uh, which eliminates the filtering. That's what a lot of uh, uh, motor drives applications in the inverter had done in the past and uh, which is a standard behavior in, for the design engineers what I've seen going around in the 90s. Mm. Yes, you can tune the DVD-T you said. That's right. But this uh, voltage will be seen by the motor, right? Yeah, you, 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 you can smooth the switching to the motor and you can absolutely smooth it to the point that it's optimized for the motor and you can in a simple way, uh, it was done uh, by just having diodes in the gate uh, that you have an up and down pass uh, for switching on and switching off different slew rates. Yeah, yeah this is th clear. Th this is clear. Yeah, yeah, and you you you, you could really minimize your 
EMI to a point that additional filtering does not seem uh, necessary except for motors who run in a rough environment where blocking and uh, different, uh, where there is not a smooth running uh, uh, speed guaranteed, where there can uh, be a hard start and a hard blocking of, of the mechanical uh, side of the motor. Uh, then filtering may be something that could help making making some sense. Uh, but that's just now a little bit speculation out of my uh, way. Yeah, yeah. For example, as I think uh, from my perspective, if we say that we are allowed to switch really fast, so you're going to have really sharp DVDTs. Yeah. How are you going to deal with them? This is the question, I guess. Yeah, but the motor at the end is an inductive device. And an inductive device uh, cannot switch as hard or take it as hard as the uh, SIC device can switch. So uh, you have to tailor it to a lower switching that the bearings and the, the windings did not get destroyed. Overheating in the windings, uh, typical, the temperature, what I have in mind uh, for windings is also for the Kappa uh, painted, uh, we call it in German, Kupferlektrad, has a limited in, uh, in, in temperature. So, and uh, that's so, Yeah, I understood that, understood the, the point. So you, uh, you increase the DVDT to the point of your system, let's say, is allowed. Yeah. Okay, the next yeah. question. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we talked about it. EMC impact on the system using SIC versus SI modules. If we run at the same switching, EMC will not a problem. If we go higher, it will be a very fine tuning uh, to see in the design that uh, cable length is minimized, that uh, all, all the rest is in a, in a way well shielded that it does not uh, bring the EMI into a problem zone that it uh, disturbs the surrounding. Okay, Konstantinos, you're... Can I add another comment here, for example? Yes, please, please. Uh, also, for uh, for our product, we also, again, for consumer drives, we did an investigation uh, in another article in PCIM that we are going to present it in PCIM. But uh, we also did some uh, basic uh, EMC measurement in conductive emissions. And for similar DVD tuning, we see, which is obvious, because of the less recovery, reverse recovery current of the uh, silicon carbide, this brings certain improvements and these are reflected in the EMC emissions and measurements due to less reverse recovery current 
and especially in these specific applications compared with uh, the reverse conducting IGBTs and the superjunction MOSFETs, yeah. Where they experience higher reverse recovery current. But if we compare different switching speeds, then also the reverse recovery current is influenced. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Konstantinos. We have another question probably coming up. What's the mean main target when developing SIC MOSFETs? I assume that the trade-off between on resistance and breakdown voltage should be the first one to overcome. Uh. Uh, yes, this is a general uh, statement, I would say. In the design process, of course, uh, uh, in terms of engineering, uh, there is this uh, known uh, trade-off between RDS on times uh, active area, which is also influenced by the different voltage classes. Of course, you get different uh, trade-offs for different voltage classes in order to support this voltage. So this is uh, the main uh, trade-off that our R&D focus. Okay, the same we have seen at MOSFETs in S silicon. Uh, it's the normal way that uh, you have, uh, if you have a higher voltage, you have uh, a higher RDS on for the given die area. I think these trade-offs will be not changed. These are physics that will follow whatever you take. The given die area and going for higher voltage receives a higher uh, uh, resistance. Okay, Konstantinos. My Backstage, let me know that uh, there is no more questions. I think we had a great session one to one, and I enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you at PCIM in May. Definitely. Thank you very much that you invite me to this uh, talk and uh, it's my pleasure also to meet new people and uh, also improve my knowledge as well and sharing the knowledge at the end. Constantinos. Thank you and bye-bye to the auditorium. <laughs>